Thank you for tuning in to Locked on Bulls. That's Pat the Designer. I'm Hayes. On today's episode, we're going to be breaking down the seasons of Alice Caruso and Lonzo Ball. We're going to get into all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked on Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. And thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Pat, today we're getting into uh, the seasons of Lonzo Ball and Alice Cruz. So we're going to start with Lonzo Ball. Um, Lonzo's season was an interesting one, right? Because yeah. When he was on the court, he was everything that he was advertised and that we needed him to be. Literally, every <laughs> single thing, every prediction, everything that we thought was going to go right with him and Zach being in the backcourt. Defensively, he was amazing for us. Out in transition, he was a, 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 just a magician in transition. And his basketball IQ was higher than I ever gave him credit for before he was on the Chicago Bulls team. But then... The injury happened first it was with COVID and then he had injury and then, you know, the bone bruise and not coming back. It's caused some very serious concern for Bulls fans over what Lonzo's Lonzo Ball's career as a Chicago Bull is going to look like with that injury prone knee. Lonzo has never played over 63 games in the season. He played 35 for us this season. Um, so out of all that stuff, I just threw at you, just threw a lot at you. What's your overall feelings on Lonzo's ball season, first season in Chicago Bulls uniform? Um, based on his first season, I agree with you. He was everything that he was advertising. And I would say, and more, right? We thought Lonzo was just going to be the guy that comes in facilitating the ball, <laughs> kind of just old school point guard, dish it out, let everybody else cook, kind of get his points here and there. Lonzo came in as a shooter. Mm. I don't think any of us really expected him. Like, we were like, all right, yeah, like in New Orleans, he shot it like 36 37%. 37%. Yeah. 37%. He'll probably be a pretty good shooter, but he's not going to be the spot-up shooter that Stan Van Gundy forced him to be down there. So he's probably not going to take that many threes. Lonzo was like, I'm going to give you all these dimes by being a shooting threat. So they now have to close out all the way on me, and it's just wide-open passing lanes. He, Him being on the floor and then him eventually going off of the floor completely changed everything for the Chicago Bulls. Not to say he was the only piece, right? Like <clears throat> There was a lot that the Bulls needed. And they, they lost a lot of guys to injury. But mm -hmm. I feel like none more important maybe than Lonzo Ball because you saw the transition game was different. You saw they just didn't have that veteran presence at the point guard position, and it, it slowed things down for the Bulls uh, when they started playing those tougher teams. Io DeSumo was very good but just wasn't able to – he, he doesn't have NBA-level IQ yet. Like, it's yeah. growing. It's higher than we expected it to be at this point in season one, but he's just not on the level of Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball's a tactician with it. I have to give him credit where credit is due. And uh, I feel like he was a he was a, a, a much more improved player than I think we thought we were going to get here in Chicago. As far as his injury concerns, I have injury concerns with everybody in the NBA. At this point, right, let's be real. If you play 63 games, I feel good about that season. We're at that point in the NBA now. I fully believe on the other side of this, don't be surprised, Bulls fans, if if Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball come back, Alice Caruso, all of these guys, right, and you start to see the, the NBA take the baseball approach. Take a day. Back to back here. Take a day. We don't need this one. It's early in the season. Take a day. I think that we're going to – I would expect to see that from Lonzo. I would probably say you'll never see Lonzo play a <clears throat> – 82 i would say you'll probably never see zach levine play a full 82 again just like you'll never see joel Embiid play a full 82 mm -hmm. game season right like this is how the nba is going i know it's not the nba we're used to i know it's not what we like i mean personally at that point right like just shorten the season <laughs> we, we've been i like i know the nba never will too much well, money to be made bro there's too, too much, much money, money to be made bro yeah. per game out here but but at that point like 
this is going to be the norm in the NBA. We just have players now that we care enough about for them to not be there 20 games. We like, man, he missed 20 games this season, but I think that's going to be the norm. I think Lonzo's going to be fine. He's still like, I don't think people remember like because Lonzo has been in the league so long, he's ridiculously young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 24 years old. Um, <clears throat> and one thing that I want to point out, Lonzo had the lowest usage rate of his career this season, but put in similar numbers to when his usage rate was four points higher his last season in in uh, New Orleans. He had the second highest PER uh, efficiency rating of his career. He had the the highest true shooting percentage of his career this season. Listen, Lonzo Ball is barely scratching the surface, and I'm going to love to see him continue to blossom as a Chicago Bulls player. I do want to see them unleash him a little bit more, use him a little bit more in the half court to run the offense at, in a more traditional point guard role. I love what he does in transition. But overall, when you look at Lonzo Ball season, there's really not much you can take away from it and say, hey, listen, it's really just health. That's the only thing. It's yeah. health. Health. Stay healthy as much as you can. Be on the Be on the court as much as you can because when Lonzo's on the court, he's everything the Bulls need. So 100 percent I feel like he's he changes how the players can attack. Don't mm-hmm. you think like he changes how because he is that threat and he was such a consistent threat. Now listen, like maybe Lonzo does take a slump second half of the season like the rest of the team did, but mm-hmm. I feel like Lonzo Ball was that shooting threat that the Bulls missed in that month <clears throat> series, in a lot of the series going before that. I feel like him not being there changed a lot for this team. They had enough pieces to overcome it, but not enough pieces that bring in what Lonzo brought in. And at a minimum, right, like the the biggest difference, everybody was like the three-point shooting was the biggest difference. Go back and rewatch that Bulls game early in the season when Lonzo was healthy. They wasn't double-teaming Giannis. Yeah. They were playing straight up. When, when you double-team Giannis, you're leaving somebody open. When you can play Giannis straight up. Now, listen, Giannis still got busy. It didn't change. He's Giannis. He, he's Giannis, right? But, yeah. like, when you have somebody who's as tall as he is, but 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, as strong as he is, as quick as he is, with a high defensive IQ, that was the piece to me that the Chicago Bulls were missing in that series. Um, and and just – Io just don't weigh enough yet to try and do <laughs> – Like, there was a couple of times Io got switched <laughs> on Giannis, and it was like, oh, God. Please, please, somebody yeah. switch. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and looking, looking at Lonzo, Lonzo averaged between 3.1 and 7.4 three-pointers per game, hitting that at a 42.3% clip. When you yeah. talk about the – like, listen, nobody's saying Lonzo instantly fixed the Bulls' three-point shooting or shooting as a team the second half of the season. But when you're missing a player who takes that many threes a game and hits him at that clip, you're going to feel that in your offense. You're going to feel it. in that mug, bro. I, I remember I remember getting to a point in the season where I was like, hey, he jacking that mug. Like, is he supposed to be shooting as much as Bro. Billy okay with this? <laughs> Bro, and I mean, yeah, of course, Lonzo had a, a few games in the season where he wasn't really hitting the ball effectively, but that was, listen, that's going to happen for shooters. One thing that I will say this, and, and being, you know, a little more critical, and I'm admitting I'm being critical, but I do want to see Lonzo finish around the rim a little bit better than what we had. We've yeah. seen him. He, he can get to the cup. He but does. he made awkward passes out of it that sometimes turned into turnovers because, hey, just take it up. At, at even if you if you if you don't make the shot, you got a good chance of getting a foul, and you're a really good free throw shooter at seventy five percent. Yeah, I no, want to see. I want to see him do that a little bit more. I want to see him be able, to, like I said, to run the offense. Some of that's on the coaching. Some of that's on him. Um, but like I said, if Lonzo even were to come back and just duplicate what he did this season for a fully healthy Bulls team with Patrick Williams in the starting lineup too. Because listen, if that Derrick Jones Jr. Lonzo Ball pick and roll became the weapon that it did at one point in the season, I can't wait to see a Patrick Williams Lonzo Ball pick and roll. I feel like the one thing that you you got to take into account with Lonzo games too is like when everyone is healthy on the floor, those kickouts are more confident. Yeah. Because a lot of those kickouts, right, were like to Derrick Jones Jr. But I do agree with you. Um, I, I feel like Lonzo absolutely has to attack the rim more and finish at the rim more. And I mean, I don't I don't know if it's a strength thing, but I'm like, dog, you this big, 
you beating a lot of these point guards at the rim. Go ahead and turn that mug over, flush it real quick. Like, yeah. score. like I feel like you, I feel like you a little too finesse yeah. right now. Like it's okay, yeah. attack a little bit. Yeah. Take that yeah. LA put, out, put, a little Chicago. Put, 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 Put a little flash on it. Put a little stank on it. You, you know, just, just a little just bit. Just a little bit. All right. Before we, before we get into the season of Alice Crew, so I want to talk to you guys about Prize Picks. Are you looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA? Then you need to try the award-winning app, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. We all love it. We know you guys will too. It's easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over/under on their projections, and you can win up to ten times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in sixty seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast fast withdrawals. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play for a limited time. Prize Picks has an exclusive no-brainer offer for all of our listeners. Users get $50 for free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point, but you must use the code NBA right. That's right. An exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA for $50 free if a, if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point. Now, before we get into Alice Crusoe, I got another thing to talk to you guys about. This is <laughs> Athletic Greens. So with one scoop, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, which I finally looked out. I know what adaptogens are now. To help, <laughs> to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Listen, it does everything. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Woo! That was a mouthful. But oh. Pat, we got to get into Alice Caruso. Uh, much, almost anything that you can say for for Lonzo, you can say to Alice Caruso. Caruso was everything he was advertised to be. Yeah. I, I, because listen, Caruso played against the Bulls one game this last season uh, and got uh, cooked. Uh, so I did not think Alice Caruso was going to come in and have the defensive impact that he did. But guess what? I was glad to be wrong. Because Caruso did his thing. What did you think about Alex Caruso season? See, I, I remember a completely different game. I remember a game where the Bulls were blowing out the Lakers. And it was the first time my wife really, like, sat down and just, like, watched the game to me end to end. Mm -hmm. And she was like, hey, man, y'all just got beat by Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> we definitely did. He cooked us on that one. Um, no, Caruso, another high IQ guy. Somebody who, I mean... When you look at the stats, don't tell enough about Caruso. Like, yeah. kind of steals per game kind of tells you what he does, right? But, like, it got to a point where it was weird. When Caruso was in the game, the entire defensive IQ elevated. Mm -hmm. When he was out of the game, it instantly dropped off. Now, towards the end of the season, I don't think he was 100%. He told you he wasn't 100%. Yeah. You know, we now know Zach wasn't 100%. The Bulls were playing it like, 45% of what they were. So, like, it, it explains not why the defense was what it was. But, I mean, when you saw them on the floor without Alex Caruso, when he was unable to play, it looked like the Bulls were a team that had no idea where to be position-wise. They had no idea where to be in the corners. Why was the corner three always open? Had no idea how to guard the passing lanes. The second mm -hmm. that Alex Caruso comes back, all of a sudden now they're snatching balls out of the passing lane. They have it. They have uh, the will to play defense. DeMar DeRozan is getting steals, uh, 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 snagging it out of people's hands on the way up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Caruso elevated the entire defensive IQ of this team. Similar in a way that Lonzo did. I think the one thing about Alex Caruso that that was tough, right, was we didn't really get to see what he can do when he was in that starting offensive spot because his wrist was never healthy. He said, yeah. like, I, I, I'm, I'm still hurt. I'm just here. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I think in that, in that game, what was that, game two, 
and even game one, right, versus the Milwaukee Bucks, you really saw the impact that Caruso made. There was a bunch of times where Caruso got switched on to Giannis. One-on-one, -on -one, Giannis kicked out of it. There was a bunch of times where Caruso was on Drew Holiday down in the post. <laughs> Drew Holiday in the post is a really ridiculous player. He did a great job, and I think that that's, that's what you saw early on in the season from Caruso, and he was kind of the spark him and Lonzo put together where Caruso playing the passing lane gets a steal, kicks that mug over to somebody real quick, and now you've got that transition started, right? He, just him coming behind with a swipe. There were so many little things that he did, kind of just th the annoying pest that, we, that every team needs, right? Like, that's what Alice Caruso was for the Chicago Bulls, and, and I really – uh, uh, um, I, I feel like he's going to be such a big asset for the Bulls, and I feel like the Lakers are really like, man, we might have messed that one up. But uh, I, I mean, when you look at his game, he just he it, it was like Stacy said, like with Javante, there was five Carusos out there at times. Yeah, yeah, and and I I think <clears throat> you saw the impact of losing Alice Caruso and Lonzo Ball around the same time, and why yeah. the Bulls defense dropped off so heavily. Yeah. Um, because when you lose two high IQ players like those that communicate also on defense, that's one thing we don't talk enough about in basketball is communicating on defense and how yeah. that makes things easier. When you have players with high basketball IQs that can identify what the other team is trying to do on offense and they talk to the play, their, their teammates on defense, that makes a world of difference when the team is trying to guard another team. We lost our two vocal high IQ basketball players on the defensive side of the ball back to back. So of course yeah. you're going to take a dip when that happens. Um, Alice Caruso, the, the offense of Alice Caruso, it, you know what? You, you, you take it. The 7.4 points, the, the, uh, the four assists, which is crazy that he averaged four assists, the 3.6 rebounds that he averaged for us this season. You take all of that. And you know why you take all of that? Because what he gives you defensively and in communication and in helping players know what they need to do you can't measure that. That's not something that you that there's a stat for as of right now. So yeah. because of that, like all of that is icing on the cake. Alex Caruso, and you know, I'm glad that we did these two players back to back in the same episode because these are two players that, while Lonzo's stats talk to you a little bit more, especially with those shooting shooting percentages, what they offer to an NBA team, especially when the team was winning, is something that. You know, the casual fans are never going to understand fully. It's you yeah. have to be watching the games. You have to be watching every minute to really see the impact and the change that happens when you don't have these players on the court. Alice Caruso, somebody who I completely underestimated what he was going to bring to the Chicago Bulls this season. I I can admit that. I can admit when I was wrong. I thought he was going to be good bench player for us. <laughs> I did not think he was going to be the player that he was for us. Like, that's just... I don't remember I, if you were live or if you were if you did a pre-recorded on it, but I remember you being like, "Y'all are tripping." If you think Alex Caruso is going to come in here and be a good value for how much we pay in this man, <laughs> bro, that's exactly what I said. I was like, "Hey, this contract is too high." No, it was worth <laughs> every. There was two in my in my preseason video. There were two things that I that I said that I look back on. One I was kind of right on, but uh, so the Alex Caruso one I completely missed. I have no problem in that. <laughs> the second one was Io Desumu because I said, "Listen, Io is not getting a lot." of minutes and if he does something's gone terribly terribly wrong with the bull season yeah hey i was completely I, I, wrong on I, I that. take credit on that y'all can check the receipts on the windy city <laughs> Bulls. i said i owe the sumo to steal of the draft out here must was, must was sleep on me that's like relax pat come on now what are you talking about i'm like all right <laughs> but yeah yeah i mean listen Alex, <laughs> everything that alice caruso brought this season you need it. you talk about people talk about the bull this bulls team didn't have enough grit Javante Green and Alice Caruso were our grit for a very long part of the season. And that's the part of the season when we were winning the most. So no, 100 percent right? You gotta you gotta give them the credit where credit is due, man. I think Caruso did some phenomenal things defensively for the Bulls. And I'm and you can't take away, like, I, I get like there's certain players like right, Tristan Thompson's championship pedigree didn't really do nothing for us. Like not a, not, a, said, not a damn like, thing. Like he he <laughs> yelled he yelled at the team on the bench and they end up getting that remember, win. You remember like, the playoff challenges he laid confused. out for people? Yeah. Well, Zach's kind of he said. Well, no, he didn't. Uh, he told Zach he I, I, I'm cool with that though. He told Zach like, hey, I need you to take over this series like Devin Booker. But I mean, you also gotta like say he on fifty percent of a knee. Like, come yeah, on, bro. bro. Like, you gonna go give me Devin Booker? Give me like Isaiah Thomas year yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me Devin Booker, but uh, 
I think Alex Caruso's calmness, his mm-hmm. understanding of the moment, I think it was huge for the first two games of that series. I think by the last two, right, like the last three games, the, the Bulls were just overwhelmed by the strength of Milwaukee. But yeah, I think that you can't overstate how calming Caruso was to those guys. And, and you saw, we we all saw the video, right? If you're a Bulls fan, you had to see the video. After they win game two, Caruso said, they're going to come out twice as aggressive. And he was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. They kicked our heads in. And but, he, might as well, he might as well have been sitting there with a crystal ball. He predicted <laughs> all of that. <laughs> he's, he's been there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When people have been there, it changes so much for you. Like, DeMar didn't say nothing. DeMar was just like, hey, we could. Yeah. Caruso was like, don't expect this to go the same way, man. So yeah. I think that you can't take away his championship pedigree, man. I think that uh, I think that it's going to be real interesting to see. I'd bet on it, man. Hey, probably something you could check out on Bet Online if you really wanted to. You know what I'm saying? And we got to tell y'all about Bet that Online. Was a, that was a segue. That was a heck of a segue. <laughs> yeah, I can laugh it up for myself. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info find all the latest odds news sports development including this year's nba playoffs major league baseball scores fights and even next season's nfl futures i'm assuming that's supposed to be nfl um better online is your continued source for all sport wagering information from live betting to playoff esports and more head over to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action let me tell you something it's better online man where the game starts. There you go. Now, after talking about two of our very important backcourt um, players, I want to we want to leave this off on the Bulls backcourt heading into the 2022-23 season. We have two players who may be both coming in from knee surgeries. We still don't know what's going on with Zach Levine. Um, we have Alice Caruso. We have Io DeSumo. What do you think about the Bulls backcourt? Heading into the season, do you think that, you know, so there were some rumors around the trade deadline that they may have been looking to bring in another backcourt member. Do you think they need to do something like that? What do you think about the Bulls backcourt? I guess we should also, because he's still on the roster, Kobe White. Let's just go ahead and throw him in that as well. Too many guards. <laughs> yeah. One, I, Too many I, guards. I, Everybody's yeah. a guard. Yeah. Shout out to P Kid. He's the one yeah. that gave up with that. Because everywhere <laughs> I look, guards. Like, <laughs> there's just too many guards on this team. When you're being real about it, right? Like, our power forward is a guard. Our backup <coughs> small forward is a guard. Our starting small forward was a guard for the most part of his career. Was season. a guard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, his career, yeah. Most of his career was a yeah. guard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Like, when you get to, like, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, right, like, things kind of change. You can, hey, we can work this out. It's team defense, blah, blah, blah. But, like, these guys are guards. You got too many guards on this team. Um... I think that our backcourt, and and we'll just talk about the ones that actually play more so the guard position there. You're talking about Lonzo Ball, uh, Alice Caruso, DeMar, or, uh, Zach Levine, Io DeSumo, Kobe White. There's one name in there that unfortunately is going to be the odd man out. Mm. Because I think going into next season, AK is going to realize he needs more size. Yeah, You need scoring. You do. But Io DeSumo showed you that he can score the basketball. He's he's just got to get used to doing that in the NBA. I would assume it was a scorer in college. I believe he averaged yeah. 17 points a game or something like that. Like, that's that's all I'm asking for you off of the bench. And that's actually high scoring in college, which is weird to see. That's why college, the NBA, be throwing my brain off. I'd be like, they'd be like, he was a high scorer in college. I'd be like, he averaged 17 points a game. Yeah, man. Like, people don't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. So, like, I, I feel like. Whoa, pause. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Iowa in his last season in college, averaged 20.1 points per game. He yeah, averaged 60. His whole career. Was yeah, his whole career, 16.7 points per game. But God, 20 points a game in college is That's a, a lot. lot. That's a lot of points. And he did that on almost 40% three-point shooting, almost 50% field goal pursuing, and almost 80% free throw shoot. Listen, Iowa DeSumo has not even scratched the surface of his scoring potential in the NBA. Yeah. And, and and unfortunately, right, like that makes Kobe White expendable. And so I think your backcourt, you're going to have four people going in the next season to me for your backcourt. You're going to have Zach Levine. You're going to have Lonzo Ball. You're going to have Ion. You're going to have Caruso. 
And I think that's really what this backcourt is going to be. I don't think you want to add too much more to that, right? Because let's be real, your small forward, like you said, can also play two guard. These guys are interchangeable and is essentially the same size as Zach Levine. Um, that's your backup action right there. Your power forward right now is technically a small forward. I think the better avenue for the Bulls to go with their with their backcourt is to leave it exactly the same, maybe trim some fat off of it, right? But mm -hmm. then add more size to the team so that if you do have a situation like this season, you're not going to the point where uh, we're playing four dudes that are 6'4", and then we're trying to get uh, booched every rebound in the world. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, move. you would rather move everybody up than down yeah. to me. And so I think that's going to be a, a key for the Bulls. Unfortunately, I think that also means Javante Green might not be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you <sighs> you might you might keep him here for depth or le legitimately specific defensive assignments. But, like, I think Javante Green can be a much better player on another team. And I think he's probably going to want to explore that at some point. I, I think Javante Green's a – Maybe Listen. not scoring wise yet, but he, defensively, he's a starting two guard in the NBA. I th well, the thing that I think I I hope that happens with Javante Green going into the season is that they improve the size on his bench enough that he becomes the backup three. I get it, but like uh, I guess you could like you you. I mean, he played right power now. forward all season. He played. He can play whatever, right? Like I think the I think yeah. the, the key for that is he has to improve some things with his game, right? Like I don't know if you want to have a guy like at, at a minimum with Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly can knock down a three ball, cons semi consistently. Uh, Patrick Beverly can get to the cup. You know what I'm saying? Like Javante Green's offensive game is I'm a dunk on you. Or I'm gonna get the put back dunk on you, or mm -hmm. I'm gonna snatch this rebound, kick it back out. I'm gonna run out to the three point line to the corner, pop fake that mug, and then run in and dunk on you. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like he has to have more of an offensive game to be the legitimate backup three on this team. But I feel like that could develop. I'm not saying but it see, can't. Here's the thing: I don't think he does. If you want to simulate, because it's not like De De Demar shooting a lot of threes. I mean, I'm just being I'm just being clear here. Javante not shooting a lot of nothing. I mean, Javante's not. I'm saying, but Demar's not. I mean, but Javante this season shot the ball with a. Now he didn't. He he only averaged a little bit under two three pointers per game, but he shot it at a 35 percent clip. Yeah, which isn't that far off what Demar's giving. You. I, I'm not. I'm not saying I need Javante shooting threes, but I feel like if he's going to be a backup three, he does have to shoot. Javante wants to go to the cup. It depends on who else you have out there with him. That's true. Like, it, it depends on the makeup of the team, and it, it yeah. depends on what the Bulls add. But I think also, right, like, Javante was able to do so much around the, the bucket because he was the big man. Mm -hmm. This is fair. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he was, he was the, man, the, the big guy down low. If you put Javante Green at three, there's essentially going to be a power forward and a center probably down there unless everybody's rotating he's probably not going to be like he'll have lanes to attack but is is it going to be enough to the point where i feel like i gotta keep javante green on this team i like javante he's he's like heart hustle and muscle i think you need players like that on this team i really think he's probably the only player that would have put grayson allen on his butt when everything was happening mm -hmm. if he wasn't hurt um but i, I don't know look at, you look you look at less less than two million he's going to get paid True. um and i i look at that like even if you throw in Javante, like you can throw him in, and much like when we got him, if the Bulls yeah. do decide to move him, it may be just to make the cap work, the cap I space work. Right. Yeah, I think. That's but right. other than that, it's not like he's he's hurting you a lot with no. with, with with the salary or anything. Um, and then you know the heart and hustle that he gives you that you can really play Javante. You know, in his minutes, Javante Green is going to give you at least solid defense, if nothing else. When you have a player like that who plays with the energy, um. You know, I like to see him stick around, but you you know, it would average, be averaged almost see. two steals per game in the playoffs. That's crazy. You know what I'm, I'm not I'm not listen, I would love to have Javante here. I just I feel like with where the Bulls are gonna go, their backcourt's going to need to simply be four people because of the complete lack of size. Right? Unless you unless you think Marco's gonna hit the weight room and roll it up. Like if Marco takes that next step. That's a different situation to me, but if Marco's kind of in that same mold that he was in, I, I don't know. I don't know. And he's frozen.
Give it a second. And welcome back. <laughs> Goddamn restream, bro. But <laughs> this part out. Finish your thought. <laughs> Oh, I finished my thought. It's all recorded. You frozen for the whole thing. <laughs> well, say it again. Um, shoot, I don't remember what the heck I just said. No, what was I saying? Uh, no, I just, I just feel like Javante uh, is probably going to be the odd man out in this. One of the odd men out in this situation because when you think about where the bull's size is, where you think about what the bulls are going to need. I mean, I, I, unless you think Marco Semenovich is going to like bulk up this offseason and roy it up. Like you, you, you're at a serious lack of size right now. Like Tony Bradley is tall, but like we saw him get picked up. All right. <laughs> now, granted, Steven Adams, very strong, but I mean, like, I wouldn't call that great size unless you feel like Tony Bradley takes some crazy step next season. Well, no, I, 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 I no, I think that we're going to see completely revamped bench. That's why it's hard to kind of determine where Javante fits in because I think once it's all said and done, that this bench is going to look so different yeah. that. We don't. We can't really call what Javante's role could be, but Javante can play anything from the two to the th to the four. Hell, we've seen him play four. I I just think when you look at it, you keep and he's on a cap fr friendly deal. You try to keep him around unless you just need to make the salary work for an amazing deal. Other than that, I expect Javante Green to be on this roster next season. How would his numbers have looked if he had played two? His he was seven points a game, four rebounds a game, nine assists. That's legitimately forty five games of power forward i would say this it it matters on who he's out there on the court with because if he's out there with lonzo in javante green in transition with lonzo ball playing the two or the three yeah i think that's a da that's dangerous i think that's dangerous so interesting I don't. I don't know. I. I. I mean. I agree with you. Like Javante makes no makes no money. We make no money. Javante yeah. make two million dollars. I gotta stop saying he make mm -hmm. no money. He made no money comparatively. He makes two million dollars. It's not crazy to say he keep him around, but I do feel like if you're gonna try and find a way to get a big man in here, he's probably the piece that that is gonna end up going along with possibly a Kobe White. We'll see. We'll see what happens with, with that. Uh, that's something that we're going to be watching closely over the course of this offseason. I do expect Kobe to probably be gone as well. And like, like I said before, I always thought I could throw out a caveat. Unless they improve this bench so much that they get some pieces in here that they're just like over the moon for. And they say, hey, you know what? We, we can afford another season of, of up and down Kobe. Yeah. Because every everybody else that we have on the bench this part, we expect to be so consistent that. We can probably bet on another season of Kobe, but we'll, <laughs> we'll 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 see. I don't expect that to happen. But yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I just did some. I, I I use this. It's this website that you can project a player's worth as a as a, as a what their contract should be, and based off Javante Green's output last season, they have him at a market value of eleven point one million dollars. I can see. I don't him. know if I agree with that. I can see him getting that at some, him him getting that at some point, but he I mean, probably never will because he he'll be thirty by the time he hits the open market. Yeah, but he'll he would go to a team that like a Golden State. But then I'm telling you, like that at thirty years old, I don't care how as your first big time being a, a free agent, yeah, that's he's tough. not getting. That's the full mid level exception. They're not. Hey, there's, is, that, there's is, that, is that like that per forty though, right? Like where where Felicio's a double double player. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. <laughs> I can't stand the websites. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's like he played forty no. minutes, he would give you uh, a double. No, it it's it's not a that. reason he God, played please, forty you know, minutes. Like <laughs> Cristiano Felicio per forty seemed like he was a beast, bro. If you go off the bro, per forty I'm for telling you, man, it was like seventeen and thirteen, bro. Like, <laughs> and we never saw that. <laughs> never saw anything remotely close to that. But that is our time for today. Oh. Hopefully, uh, you guys appreciate it. Let us know down below what you guys think about the backcourt going into the season, into the into next season. What did you think about the seasons of Alice Caruso, Lonzo Ball? Do you think we're tripping? Do you agree with us? Let us know all that down below in the comment section. Pat, go ahead and give them the social media. Hey, follow us on it. Follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. It's at P A T T H E D E S I G N E R. You can see me rant about my Chicago White Sox over there who blew a. Six run lead. Uh, yeah, follow me on that and follow <laughs> us on everything at Locked On Bulls. There you go. You can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I C E. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Thank you for tuning in and making Locked On Bulls a part of your day 
every day. Now for your second listen, go check on Locked On NBA, where the Locked On experts take you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. You can even catch our very own Pat the Designer over there once a week. But thank you guys for tuning in. We love you guys. Peace out, Chicago. Y'all stay safe out there. Peace. (coughs) 